This is why everyone is Googling the Nephilim. Did Nephilim giants actually exist? Who were the Nephilim? To answer this question, we must first look at their origin. The origin of Nephilim and giants. The origin of the Nephilim and giants is a topic shrouded in mystery and intrigue, with their roots traced back to ancient biblical texts, primarily Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. These verses describe a peculiar event in the early history of mankind, where the sons of God are said to have interbred with human women, resulting in the birth of offspring known as the Nephilim. This account has sparked much debate and speculation among scholars and theologians. One interpretation suggests that the sons of God were fallen angels who rebelled against God and sought to corrupt humanity by producing a race of hybrid beings. This view is supported by other biblical passages, such as 2 Peter 2 verses 4 to 5 and Jude 1 verse 6 which speaks of angels who sinned and were cast into darkness. Another interpretation posits that the sons of God were actually descendants of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, who intermarried with the descendants of Cain, resulting in a line of people who were morally and spiritually corrupt. According to this view, the Nephilim were not supernatural beings, but rather exceptionally tall and powerful individuals. Regardless of the exact nature of the Nephilim and giants, their existence raises profound questions about the nature of evil, the limits of human knowledge, and the consequences of disobedience to divine commandments. They serve as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the importance of remaining faithful to God and resisting temptation. While the origin of the Nephilim and giants remains a topic of speculation, their legacy continues to intrigue and captivate the imagination of people around the world, inspiring countless works of art, literature, and popular culture. Understanding Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 is a passage that has puzzled and intrigued scholars for centuries, as it describes a mysterious event in the early history of mankind. The passage reads, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 Regardless of the interpretation, Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 highlights the consequences of disobedience and the importance of remaining faithful to God. It serves as a warning against the dangers of moral and spiritual corruption reminding us of the need to uphold God's commandments and live according to His will. The passage also emphasizes the power and sovereignty of God, who ultimately judges the wicked and preserves the righteous. It reminds us that God's Spirit strives with humanity, offering the opportunity for repentance and redemption. Some others believe that the sons of God are kingly or nobility interpretation. This interpretation suggests that the sons of God were rulers or nobles who took advantage of their power to marry any women they desired, leading to societal corruption. Proverbs 31 verses 3 to 5, which warns kings against indulging in wine and women. Some others think that the sons of God are legendary or mythological interpretation. Some scholars view the story of the Nephilim as a mythological or legendary tale that symbolizes the clash between divine and human realms. This interpretation does not rely on specific biblical passages, but on the literary and cultural context of the ancient Near East. However, 
Looking closely at the text shows that the sons of God are actually angels. Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 captivates many Bible readers because of the mysterious identity of both the sons of God and the Nephilim. The Bible says, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. We can deduce why Satan sent his angels to intermarry with human women, directly or indirectly. Satan attempted to pollute mankind's genetic pool with satanic corruption, planting something resembling a genetic pathogen in order to render the human race unfit to bear the seed of the woman, the Messiah, promised in Genesis 3 verse 15. Genesis 3 verse 15 And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The Savior could not be born of a demon-possessed mother, so if Satan could succeed in infecting the entire race, the Deliverer could not come. And Satan came close to succeeding. The people who had become so polluted that God decided to relaunch with Noah and his sons and imprison the demons who had polluted it so they could never do it again. God's reaction to this great wickedness. Both pre-Christian Judaism and the early church held that the sons of God were spirit beings or angels who took human wives and gave birth to giants known as the Nephilim. This view has become less prevalent today due to our modern dislike of the supernatural. While the everyday Christian may reluctantly embrace the Bible's teaching about Christ's virgin birth and resurrection, the idea of human and spirit-bred giants is just too far-fetched. Sons of God were fallen angels The fact that the phrase sons of God always refers to angels in the Old Testament lends support. Job 1 verse 6 now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, adversary, accuser, also came among them. Job 2 verse 1 Again there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, adversary, accuser, also came among them to present himself before the Lord. Job 38 verse 7 when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, angels, shouted for joy? In all three cases, the sons of God are spirit angelic beings, including Satan. The phrase's use in Job suggests that Genesis 6 is referring to spirits or angels. Genesis 6 verses 1 to 2 contrasts the sons of God with man, implying that these are non-human beings. Genesis 6 verse 1 says that man began to multiply, and daughters were born to them. The Hebrew word for man is the generic term for mankind, as used in Genesis 5 verses 1 to 2. The sons of God are contrasted with man, thus the sons of God were distinct from man, and married all mankind's daughters. As a result, the sons of God must be non-human beings of some kind. The context implies that the Nephilim were the resulting offspring of spirit beings and humans. The Nephilim, or fallen ones in Genesis 6 verse 4, are mysterious personalities, the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. This text does not explain how the Nephilim arrived, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man and bore children to them, it simply states. But why are the Nephilim mentioned in Genesis 6 alongside the intermarriage of the sons of God and daughters of man? It is unclear how these mighty men of renown came about if they were not the outcome of intermarriage between spirit beings and humans. Jude likely understands Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 to refer to the intermarriage between spirit beings and humans. Jude 6 tells of angels who did not stay within their position of authority, but left their proper dwelling. 
Unless Jude is referring to an unknown event, it appears to be referring to the angels who left heaven to live on earth in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. These arguments support the traditional view that the sons of God mated with human women and gave birth to the Nephilim. Though this may appear strange to modern ears, the same could be said for the entire Bible. Truth is stranger than fiction, and the world God has created is far from what we commonly believe. The sons of God saw the daughters of men. It is more accurate to see the sons of God as either demons, angels in rebellion against God, or uniquely demon-possessed men, and the daughters of men as human women. Jude 6 and the angels who did not keep their own designated place of power, but abandoned their proper dwelling place, these he has kept in eternal chains under the thick gloom of utter darkness for the judgment of the great day. Jude 6 also explains what God did to these evil angels. The Nature of Nephilim and Giants the term Nephilim is often associated with giants or mighty warriors, and their mention in the Bible raises questions about their origin, characteristics, and significance. While the biblical text does not provide a detailed description of the physical attributes of the Nephilim and giants, it does offer some insight into their nature and role in biblical history. Genesis 6 verse 4 is one of the key verses that mentions the Nephilim, describing them as the heroes of old, men of renown. This passage suggests that the Nephilim were not merely giants in stature. The term Nephilim itself is derived from the Hebrew word Nephal. Another biblical passage that sheds light on the nature of the Nephilim is Numbers 13 verses 33 which describes the spies sent by Moses to scout the land of Canaan. The spies report seeing the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, and describe them as giants who made the Israelites feel like grasshoppers in comparison. This description suggests that the Nephilim were significantly larger and more powerful than ordinary humans. The Nephilim are symbols of the corrupting influence of sin, and the importance of remaining faithful to God. Physical Characteristics and Abilities While the biblical text does not provide a detailed description of their physical attributes, it does offer some clues about their nature and abilities. The term Nephilim is often associated with giants or mighty warriors, suggesting that they were larger and more powerful than ordinary humans. They made the Israelite spies feel like grasshoppers in comparison. This description suggests that the Nephilim were significantly larger and more imposing than ordinary humans, possibly indicating that they were giants in stature. Some believe that they possessed supernatural abilities, such as enhanced strength, speed, and agility which allowed them to perform feats that were beyond the capabilities of ordinary humans. Others suggest that their abilities were more mundane, such as their skill in warfare or their prowess in combat. While the exact nature of the physical characteristics and abilities of the Nephilim and giants remains uncertain, their presence in the biblical narrative serves as a reminder of the diversity of beings and creatures that inhabit the world of the Bible. Their larger-than-life stature and legendary status have captured the imagination of people for centuries, inspiring countless works of art, literature, and folklore. Regardless of the interpretation the Nephilim and giants remain a fascinating and enigmatic aspect of biblical law. Spiritual Implications and Significance The Nephilim and giants symbolize the spiritual forces of evil that seek to undermine God's plan for humanity. This suggests that their existence was part of a larger spiritual conflict between good and evil with the Nephilim and giants representing the forces of darkness that oppose God's will. This interpretation is supported by passages such as Ephesians 6 verse 12, 
which speaks of spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. According to Genesis 6 verse 5, the wickedness of humanity was great in the days of the Nephilim, prompting God to bring about the flood as a means of judgment and purification. This suggests that the Nephilim and giants were part of God's plan to cleanse the world of sin and restore righteousness. The Story of Goliath and David The story of David and Goliath found in 1 Samuel verse 17 is one of the most famous and beloved accounts in the Bible. It is a story of faith, courage, and the power of God to overcome seemingly impossible odds. The story takes place during the ongoing conflict between the Israelites and the Philistines, with the two armies facing each other across the Valley of Elah. The Philistines sent out their champion Goliath, a giant of formidable size and strength, to challenge the Israelites to send out a champion to face him in single combat. Goliath's challenge strikes fear into the hearts of the Israelites, and none of King Saul's soldiers are willing to confront him. However, David, a young shepherd boy who has come to the battlefield to bring food to his brothers, volunteers to fight Goliath. Saul is initially reluctant to allow David to face Goliath, considering him to be too young and inexperienced. However, David insists, citing his experience as a shepherd defending his flock against predators. Saul eventually agrees and offers David his armor, but David declines, choosing instead to face Goliath armed only with his sling and five smooth stones. As Goliath approaches, David runs to meet him, taking a stone from his bag and slinging it at Goliath's forehead. The stone strikes Goliath, knocking him to the ground and killing him instantly. Then he takes Goliath's own sword and cuts off his head, demonstrating the victory of God over the enemies of Israel. The story of David and Goliath is a powerful example of faith in action. Despite facing a seemingly unbeatable foe, David trusts in God to deliver him and his people. His courage and faithfulness inspire the Israelite army to victory, and his actions demonstrate that God can use even the weakest and most unlikely individuals to accomplish his purpose. One of the key verses in this story is 1 Samuel 17 verses 45 to 47, where David declares to Goliath, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by my sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. This declaration of faith and trust in God's power is a central theme of the story highlighting the idea that true victory comes not from human strength or ability, but from the Lord. The story of David and Goliath continues to inspire and encourage people of faith to trust in God's power to overcome the giants in their lives. Other Biblical References and Encounters Throughout the Bible, there are various references and encounters with beings that could be interpreted as Nephilim or giants, although the descriptions are not always explicit. These references provide additional context and insight into the presence of these beings in biblical history. One such reference is found in the Book of Numbers, where the Israelites encounter the Anakim, who are described as descendants of the Nephilim. Numbers 13 verse 33 the Anakim were a tribe of giants living in the land of Canaan, and their presence posed a significant obstacle to the Israelites as they sought to conquer the land. Another biblical reference to giants is found in the story of King Og of Bashan, 
who is described as one of the last of the Rephaim, a race of giants. Deuteronomy 3 verse 11. King Og's bed is described as being made of iron and being nine cubits long and four cubits wide, indicating his immense size. In the book of Joshua, there are several references to encounters with giants in the land of Canaan. For example, Joshua 15 verses 13 to 14 mentions Caleb driving out the three sons of Anak from Hebron, indicating that these were formidable opponents who were a significant threat to the Israelites. The book of 2 Samuel also contains a reference to encounters with giants, specifically in the context of battles fought by David and his men. In 2 Samuel 21 verses 15 to 22, there is an account of David's nephew, Abishai, killing the giant Ishbi Benob, who was descended from the giants. These biblical references and encounters with giants serve to highlight the challenges and obstacles faced by the people of God in their efforts to possess the land of Canaan. They also underscore the theme of God's faithfulness and provision as he enables his people to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. While the exact nature of these giants and their relationship to the Nephilim is not explicitly stated in the biblical text, their presence in the narrative serves to emphasize the power and sovereignty of God. These encounters remind us that no matter how formidable our enemies may seem, God is able to deliver us and grant us victory. The Nephilim and giants have captured the imagination of people for centuries, not only in biblical text, but also in various extra-biblical and ancient texts. These texts provide additional insights and perspectives on these beings, shedding light on their nature and significance in ancient cultures. One of the most well-known extra-biblical texts that mention the Nephilim is the Book of Enoch. Another extra-biblical text that mentions giants is the Book of Jubilees, an ancient Jewish text that provides an account of biblical history. Comparisons with Biblical Accounts Despite these similarities, there are also significant differences between the biblical accounts and other ancient texts. One notable difference is the moral implications attributed to the giants in the Bible. In the biblical narrative, giants are often portrayed as symbols of sin and corruption, such as in the story of the Nephilim, whose existence leads to God's decision to flood the earth. Genesis 6 verses 5 to 7. This contrasts with other myths. Where giants are often depicted as heroic or noble figures, such as the Greek titans who were revered as the ancestors of God. Additionally, the biblical accounts of giants are often tied to specific historical events or figures, such as the conquest of Canaan by the Israelites. In contrast, other ancient myths tend to portray giants as legendary or mythical beings who exist outside of historical context. This difference reflects the unique historical and theological framework of the Bible, which seeks to convey moral and spiritual truths through historical narrative. Despite their negative portrayal, the Nephilim and giants also serve as examples of God's power and sovereignty. In the story of David and Goliath, for example, God uses the seemingly insignificant shepherd boy David to defeat the mighty giant Goliath, demonstrating that God can use anyone to accomplish his purposes. In the book of Deuteronomy, God's judgment against the giants of Bashan is recounted, highlighting his power and authority over all beings. Deuteronomy 3 verse 11 describes King Og of Bashan as a giant with a bed that is nine cubits long and four cubits wide, indicating his immense size. Despite his size and strength, God delivers King Og into the hands of the Israelites, demonstrating his superiority over all earthly powers. Despite the judgment against the Nephilim and giants, the Bible also portrays God's mercy and compassion. In the story of David and Goliath, God uses the unlikely hero David to defeat the giant Goliath, 
demonstrating his ability to use the weak to overcome the strong. This story serves as a reminder of God's faithfulness to his people and his willingness to intervene on their behalf. In the New Testament, the Apostle Peter refers to the judgment against the Nephilim and the giants as a warning to those who would follow in their footsteps. In 2 Peter 2 verses 4 to 5, Peter describes God's judgment against the angels who sinned in the ancient world, highlighting the consequences of disobedience and the importance of remaining faithful to God. The Spiritual Lessons One of the key spiritual lessons from the Nephilim and giants is the importance of obedience and faithfulness to God. In the biblical narrative, the Nephilim are often associated with rebellion and wickedness, which ultimately leads to their destruction. This serves as a reminder that God judges sin and disobedience and that those who remain faithful to him will ultimately be rewarded. Spiritual Warfare with Giants Now Understanding spiritual warfare is essential for Christians as it sheds light on the unseen battle that takes place in the spiritual realm. Spiritual warfare refers to the conflict between the forces of good and evil, with Christians called to engage in this battle through prayer, faith, and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible provides valuable insights into spiritual warfare, offering guidance on how to recognize, resist, and overcome spiritual attacks. One of the key aspects of spiritual warfare is the recognition of the enemy. Ephesians 6 verse 12 reminds us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. This verse highlights the spiritual nature of the battle, emphasizing that our true enemy is not other people, but the spiritual forces of evil that seek to destroy us. Another important aspect of spiritual warfare is the need for spiritual armor. Ephesians 6 verses 13 to 18 describes the armor of God, which includes the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, and the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The spiritual armor is essential for protecting us against spiritual attacks and equipping us for the battle ahead. In addition to recognizing the enemy and wearing the spiritual armor, Spiritual warfare also involves prayer and spiritual discernment. Ephesians 6 verse 18 urges us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Prayer is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare, enabling us to seek God's protection, guidance, and strength in the midst of battle. Furthermore, spiritual warfare requires faith and perseverance. James 4 verse 7 reminds us to submit yourselves, then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This verse emphasizes the importance of standing firm in our faith, resisting the devil's attacks, and trusting in God's power to deliver us from evil. Ultimately, the goal of spiritual warfare is not just to defend ourselves against spiritual attacks, but also to advance the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 4 states, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. This verse highlights the power of spiritual weapons such as prayer, faith, and the Word of God in overcoming the forces of evil and bringing about God's kingdom on earth. Overcoming Spiritual Giants in Our Lives Overcoming spiritual giants in our lives is a challenge that many Christians face, but the Bible offers guidance and encouragement on how to overcome these obstacles. Spiritual giants can take many forms, such as fear, doubt, sin, or temptation. But with faith and reliance on God, we can conquer them. 
One of the key principles to overcoming spiritual giants is faith. Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 17 verse 20, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. This verse highlights the power of even a small amount of faith to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Another important aspect of overcoming spiritual giants is prayer. In Mark 9 verse 29, Jesus tells his disciples, This kind can come out only by prayer. This verse emphasizes the importance of prayer in facing spiritual battles, as it allows us to seek God's strength, wisdom, and guidance in overcoming our giants. Additionally, the Bible encourages us to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. In Zechariah 4 verse 6, the prophet declares, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord Almighty. This verse reminds us that it is not our own strength and efforts that will enable us to overcome spiritual giants, but the power of God's Spirit working within us. Furthermore, the Bible encourages us to put on the full armor of God to withstand spiritual attacks. Ephesians 6 verses 11 to 12 states, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This passage reminds us that we are engaged in a spiritual battle and need to be prepared by putting on the armor of God. Moreover, the Bible encourages us to persevere in the face of trials and tribulations. James 1 verse 12 states, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse reminds us that perseverance is key to overcoming spiritual giants as we trust in God's promises and his faithfulness to see us through. Nephilim, Giants, and the End Times The mention of Nephilim and giants in the Bible has led to various interpretations and speculations, especially regarding their role in the end times. While the Bible does not provide explicit details about the connection between these beings and the end times, there are passages that some interpret as referencing their return or influence in the last days. One of the key passages often cited in discussion about Nephilim and the end times is Matthew 24 verses 37 to 39, where Jesus compares the days leading up to his second coming to the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Some interpret this passage as suggesting a parallel between the moral corruption and spiritual darkness of Noah's day, which included the presence of the Nephilim and the conditions that will precede the return of Christ. Another passage that is sometimes connected to the Nephilim and the end times is Revelation 9 verses 1 to 11, which describes a series of apocalyptic events involving strange creatures and supernatural beings. In particular, Revelation 9 verse 6 mentions creatures that have the power to harm them for five months but are not permitted to kill them. Some have speculated that these creatures could be related to the Nephilim or other supernatural beings mentioned in the Bible. However, it's important to note that these interpretations are speculative and not universally accepted among scholars. The Bible does not provide clear evidence that the Nephilim or giants will play a significant role in the end times. Instead, 
The focus of biblical prophecy is on the return of Christ, the final judgment, and the establishment of God's kingdom. Regardless of the specific role of the Nephilim and giants in the end times, the broader message of Scripture is clear. We are called to be prepared for the return of Christ, to live lives of faithfulness and obedience, and to share the hope of the gospel with others. As Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 44, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. This is the central message of biblical prophecy and the key to understanding the significance of the end times. Their relevance to you the relevance of the Nephilim and giants to modern times is a topic that has sparked curiosity and debate among theologians and scholars. While the biblical accounts of these beings are ancient, their significance can still be understood in the modern day, offering insights into spiritual truths and lessons that are applicable to our lives today. One way in which the Nephilim and giants are relevant to modern times is their representation of spiritual battles and challenges that Christians face. Additionally, the Nephilim and giants serve as reminders of the consequences of disobedience and rebellion against God. In the biblical narrative, the presence of the Nephilim is linked to the corruption and wickedness that led to the flood in the time of Noah. This serves as a warning to us today about the dangers of straying from God's path and the importance of living in obedience to His will. Furthermore, the Nephilim and giants can also be seen as symbols of the challenges and obstacles that we face in our lives. Just as the Israelites encountered giants in the land of Canaan, we too may encounter giants in the form of difficulties, hardships, and trials. However, like David who defeated Goliath, we can overcome these giants with faith and reliance on God. Moreover, the Nephilim and giants can also serve as symbols of the power and sovereignty of God. Despite their great size and strength, the giants mentioned in the Bible were ultimately defeated by God's chosen people. This reminds us that no matter how formidable our challenges may seem, God is greater and He will help us to overcome them. Applying the Lessons of Nephilim and Giants The stories of the Nephilim and Giants in the Bible offer timeless lessons that can be applied to our lives today. While these stories may seem distant and mythical, their underlying principles can help us navigate the challenges of our modern world and grow in our faith. By examining these stories through the lens of Scripture, we can glean insights that are relevant to our lives and circumstances. One key lesson from the stories of the Nephilim and giants is the importance of courage in the face of adversity. In the story of David and Goliath, we see how David, a young shepherd boy, faced the giant warrior Goliath with courage and faith in God. Despite Goliath's intimidating size and strength, David trusted in God to deliver him and was willing to step forward to confront the giant. This story reminds us that courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to act in spite of fear, trusting in God's strength to overcome. Another important lesson we can learn from these stories is the power of faith and trusting God. Hebrews 11 verse 1 defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Just as Noah demonstrated faith by building the ark in obedience to God's command, we too are called to trust in God's promises and obey His word, even when it seems difficult or impossible. Like David, we can face our giants with faith knowing that God is with us and He will give us the strength we need to overcome. Furthermore, the stories of the Nephilim and giants remind us of the importance of humility before God. Proverbs 3 verse 34 tells us, He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. 
Both the Nephilim and the giants in the Bible were known for their pride and arrogance, which ultimately led to their downfall. As Christians, we are called to humble ourselves before God, acknowledging our dependence on Him and seeking His guidance in all things. Moreover, the stories of the Nephilim and giants teach us the importance of standing firm in our faith, even in the face of opposition. Ephesians 6 verses 13 to 14 exhorts us to put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. Just as the Israelites were called to stand firm against the giants in the land of Canaan, we too are called to stand firm in our faith, trusting in God's strength to help us overcome any obstacles we may face. Building Faith and Overcoming Challenges The stories of the Nephilim and giants in the Bible can inspire us to build our faith and overcome challenges in our own lives. These stories are not just tales of ancient times, but are meant to teach us valuable lessons about trusting God, courage in the face of adversity, and the power of faith to conquer obstacles. One of the key themes in the stories of the Nephilim and giants is the importance of trusting in God's promises. When we face challenges that seem insurmountable, we can turn to God in prayer and trust that He will provide for our needs. Another important lesson from these stories is the power of courage in the face of fear. Joshua 1 verse 9 encourages us to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Like David facing Goliath, we may encounter giants in our lives, challenges that seem overwhelming and intimidating. But just as God was with David, He is with us as well, giving us the courage we need to face our giants and overcome them. Furthermore, the stories of the Nephilim and giants teach us the importance of perseverance in our faith. Both Noah and David faced significant challenges, but they persevered in their faith and were rewarded for their obedience. When we encounter difficulties in our own lives, we can take heart knowing that God is faithful and will reward those who persevere in faith. Moreover, the stories of the Nephilim and giants remind us of the importance of humility before God. Proverbs 3 verse 34 tells us, He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. Both the Nephilim and the giants in the Bible were known for their pride and arrogance, which ultimately led to their downfall. As Christians, we are called to humble ourselves before God, acknowledging our dependence on Him and seeking His guidance in all things. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together in Your presence, we come with open hearts and minds, seeking understanding and wisdom from Your Holy Scriptures. We recognize that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us through life's journey. We humbly ask for your guidance as we delve into its depths. Grant us the humility to approach your word with reverence and awe, understanding that it holds the key to eternal life and wisdom beyond our comprehension. Help us to set aside our preconceptions and biases, allowing your truth to penetrate our hearts and transform our lives. Lord, we acknowledge that your word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, capable of discerning the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. May it pierce through the darkness of our ignorance and illuminate the path of righteousness before us. Give us teachable spirits, O God willing to learn and grow in our understanding of your word. May we not merely be hearers of the word, but doers also, applying its timeless principles to our daily lives. Help us to approach your word with a spirit of unity and love, recognizing that while we may have different interpretations, we are all seeking to know you more deeply 
and follow your will more faithfully. Let your word be a source of unity among us, binding us together in love and mutual respect. Father, we pray for those who have yet to encounter your word or who struggle to understand its message. Open their hearts and minds to receive your truth and send laborers into the harvest to share your word with them in ways they can understand. Finally, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be our ultimate guide and interpreter as we study your word. Illuminate the scriptures for us, revealing your truth with clarity and conviction. May your word take root in our hearts, producing fruit in our lives that glorifies your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.